Today, I want to talk about a compass. Now, when I say that word compass, what image comes to mind? I'm guessing you're thinking of one of these, right? A guide. And God certainly does guide us. The Leahona was given as a compass. It guided them to the promised land. Uh, the Lord says that the scriptures are a modern day compass, a modern day Leahona that guide us to the promised land. And so, yes, when you hear the word compass, it's easy to see or to assume that we're thinking of this north, south, east, west director to guide us. But if you look at the shape that represents the compass, it's one of these. That's the shape and this is a compass. And so let's talk about a compass. I'm hoping you've all had an opportunity to use one of these, maybe back in geometry, maybe drafting. This is a tool of drawing, drafting. This is a tool. And I love that. Let me pause and talk about that briefly, because if the Lord is going to use symbols like a compass or a square, those are drafting tools. And I love that. Think about what that means. What that tells me is that I am a work in progress. I am not a finished product yet. That I am being drafted. I am in progress. I should not expect myself to be a finished product. That God is working on me. That he is drafting my story and my life and my plan. And I love that idea. And if I grant myself a probationary state, like we saw with cherubim and the flaming sword, if I understand that I am not finished, I am a work in progress. And the symbol of that are these drafting tools. That's a beautiful image that I am, my, my story is being constructed. The other thing I love to think about is who is the architect that's drawing the plan? That I need to remember, I need to constantly remember that God is the ultimate architect and that he has a beautiful plan. He has drafted a beautiful plan for my progression. And that if I remember that he is the architect, I can seek him. But I want to talk specifically about how to use a compass. Again, I hope you've all had a chance to use a compass. The compass is used to draw circles. Now that's a powerful symbol, a circle. And this is how you draw a circle. Now, how do you use a compass to draw a circle? You point one side of the compass into the center and then you circumscribe a circle around that center. Now, you should recognize those words, circumscribe. You make a point and circumscribe around it a circle. Now, may I suggest that there is the instruction. Every time there's a circle, there was a center point that circumcised everything around that point. The circle is pointing to a center. Now, think of the circles we make. There is a critical moment in our temple service where there's a circle. Now, if there's a circle, there was a point that drew that circle. So every time there's a circle, the symbol of the compass would ask us to say, 
What's the center point that circumscribed everything into this circle? So, think about that critical circle and what is the center? It is the offering on an altar of the Lamb of God. Jesus and His atonement are the center of that circle. That circle circumscribes everything around Jesus and His atonement. So, let me point out a very powerful practical application. Again, remember our connection that says tokens reveal the covenant. Every time there's an ordinance, there's an action, there's a physical action that's a token. And the token reveals what I'm promising to do. So, if the token is that circle, and if the center point is the atonement of Christ, then what's the covenant? What am I promising to do uh, because of that circle? So, again, let me ponder. Let me help you ponder a little bit. Why would human beings ever get into a circle? Why would I teach a class in a circle? Now, there are moments where I teach in a circle. So, why would I teach a class in a circle? What's the advantage of teaching in a circle? Well, a circle allows us to see each other most clearly. If we're in rows and we're all facing a teacher and I'm sitting in the front row, I can't see anyone behind me. If we form a circle, then I can see everyone. It gives me the greatest vantage point. But again, here's the point. Let's circumscribe that circle around the atonement of Christ. If I'm going to see you, if I'm going to stand in a circle with you and see you, I have to see you through that center point. I am being instructed to see you through the atonement of Christ. There's the covenant. And there's the get out of the terrestrial room and into the celestial room. See each other through the atonement of Christ. See through Him. He is the center point of that circle. Therefore, everything goes through Him. And I promised Him in sacred halls that I would see you, see everyone through His atonement. Now, would you ponder what that means in your life? to see others through His atonement. Not the raw them, but the wrapped in the atonement them. The light of the King's jewel them. See them. It's Jesus and the Pharisee once again that we've talked about in another video. Do you see it or do you see her? Do you see her wrapped in the atonement? Cleansed, perfected, not what people are, but what Jesus could make them. Is that how you see your spouse, your children, your neighbors, your ward? We are under covenant to circumscribe everything into one great whole. And in that circle, that one great whole is His atoning sacrifice. I walked out of that covenant promising to see you and everyone else in my life through Him. If I remove the atonement from you and see raw you, I'm breaking the covenant I made. I promised him that I would see you through him.
beautiful symbolism. And the token reveals what I'm promising. Now let's get to another promise. In that circle, on Jesus, what do we place? Broken people. We gather in a circle to place broken people on Jesus. If anything is a description of what my life should be about, it's the symbolism that the compass and that square bring to me. My life, all of our lives, all of our circles, us as a church, me as a family, my wife and I as a couple, us as a family, every circle is designed to make it safe for people to come to Jesus, to put broken people on Jesus. Now, let me show you a circle in the scriptures where the broken person was outside and was not allowed. In the 19th chapter of Luke, Jesus comes into Jericho and a man by the name of Zacchaeus wants to see him. Zacchaeus wants to see Jesus. Now, Zacchaeus has three strikes against him. Number one, he's a tax collector. Now, that means he works for Rome and he collects taxes for Rome. That makes him hated by the Jews. And secondly, he's rich. Now, the way taxes worked is he had to pay a set amount to Rome. Anything more that he collected was his to keep. That was his pay. So if he's rich, the assumption is he's cheated us so that he could be rich. That makes him extra hated. Now that I don't think is the case because of what Zacchaeus tells Jesus, that he was an honest man. And number three, it says he was little of stature. Now he couldn't see Jesus, so he climbed a tree. Now see this symbolically. Why can't a little of stature person see Jesus? who's in the center of that circle. It's because they have pushed him out of that circle. He is on the outside of the circle. And oh, so often that's what we do to the Zacchaeuses of our lives. The people who don't agree with us, who see things differently, the thing, people who smell differently and act differently and talk differently, they make us uncomfortable and so we put them on the outside of the circle. Are there people in your life that you have pushed to the outside of the circle? If there are, you've missed the point of that covenant. The purpose of the circle is to put broken people on Jesus, on his atonement so they can be healed. The purpose of families is to put broken people on Jesus so they can heal, not push them out of the circle. Notice what Jesus does. I love this. Jesus, let's read it. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him. That's the covenant. Look for them, see them. Now, what he says next haunts me. He said unto Zacchaeus, make haste and come down for today. I must abide at thy house. Why the word must? I must abide at thy house. I think what he's saying is I'm coming to your house because they didn't. They didn't come and they should have. Therefore, I'm coming. And I wonder if like as we gather at sacrament meeting, so here's my ward and we've gathered and we're having sacrament meeting and Jesus says, I'm going to come. I want to come. I want to come to your sacrament meeting. I wonder if he would say to my ward, sorry, guys, I can't come to your sacrament meeting. There's people I must go see. And I think that what he would be trying to say is, you didn't. 
you didn't bring them into the circle and put them on my atoning sacrifice. Therefore, I've got to go see them. Do you see the symbolism of that circle, the compass that drew the circle, that circumscribed the circle? Do you see that every circle in my life is an invitation to bring broken people to the atonement of Christ so they can be healed? Now, in my calling, I have the best calling in the church. I am the primary chorister. I lead the music and I love it. Because do you know what my, um, my assignment is? Do you know what my calling is? Is to use music to bring children and put them on Christ. To pull them in and put them on Christ. And I'm going to do it with music. Some of you do it with scriptures or words, but whatever your calling, whatever circle you're in, whether that's husband, wife, family, work, church, whatever circle you're currently in, the invitation you received in sacred halls was to take advantage of that circle and bring broken people in to find Jesus. Look for them. See them. They are everywhere. They are in your family. They are in your ward. They are at work. They are at school. Look for them. Look for them, them who are broken and need him and make it safe in your circle for them to find Jesus. Do you see the symbolism? Do you see the powerful symbolism that circumscribes a circle? Everywhere you find a circle, especially in the temple, ask yourself, what great hole circumscribed that circle and what's the message? What am I being invited to do because of the point that's at the center of that circle? I bear you my testimony of an atoning sacrifice that helps me see you so much more clearly. When I look at you and others through his atoning sacrifice, I see a very different thing than when I take that atonement off. And I testify that we are under covenant to look for and see the broken people and bring them to Jesus. That's the reason for our circles. That's the reason for our families. It's a reason for our wards. Of that I testify in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.